Forget for a moment the conspiracy theories of aliens building pyramids on Mars along with other structures and crashed UFOs. Is there life on Mars? Famed astronomer Percival Lowell once thought so. He peered through his telescope from the Lowell Observatory in Arizona and saw what he believed were canals that Martians created. This was somewhat depicted in the 1952 film Red Planet Mars. This is the first picture. We took it a week ago tonight. See, here are the indentations I told you about. They couldn't be plainer. And all going from north to south. What are they? Canals, what else? Traversing the entire planet. In spite of science fiction films predicting that by the 21st century, yes, man was expected to have populated the red planet, astronauts have yet to even set the first foot on the surface. Of course, with evidence of water, such as surface erosion long ago in Mars's history, life may have existed. In what form, however? Well, we just don't know. What science has accomplished is sending robotic technology to the planet. The list is long and the failures swelled their numerous. The Soviet Union made the first attempts in 1962, launching spacecraft that would fly by Mars. Some never reached Earth orbit. Others broke apart or communication radios failed. The United States' first failure, Mariner 3, was in 1964. Subsequently, in 1964, Mariner 4 succeeded and returned 21 images. For the first time in history, men encounter Mars. A team of men secluded inside a NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory at Pasadena, California, will encounter Mars through the eyes of a spacecraft launched from Earth eight months ago. The director of the lab is Dr. William Pickering, organizer of the teams that built the first U.S. Earth satellite, the Rangers that photographed the moon, the Mariner probe to Venus, and the Mariner 4 team now about to face its most momentous challenge. We're about to encounter the planet Mars with a spacecraft built here at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Down in that building, the television and press are gathering, and when it flies by the planet, they will report to the world what the spacecraft is able to see and discover about Mars. But what the press and television and the rest of the world cannot see is the actual encounter of Mars by the men who are experiencing the encounter. Down there in another building, the Space Flight Operations Building, a team of scientists and engineers is talking to the spacecraft, listening to it, controlling it. The USSR launched Zon 2 in 1964, which failed, as did Mars 1969A and B the same year, both due to launch vehicle failures. America's Mariner 6 in 1969 returned 75 images, and then Mariner 7, the same year, returned 126 images. Mariner 6 and Mariner 7 continue to tell us more and more about the planet Mars. Those canals we thought were there are not, and the little green men that Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote about in his books don't exist. But now the Jet Propulsion Laboratory advises instruments on Mariner 7 have detected elements on Mars that indicate life could exist. ABC Science Editor Jules Bergman reports from Pasadena, California. Two of the gases that are basic building blocks of life have been found in the Martian atmosphere. Ammonia and methane have been discovered by Mariner 7's infrared spectrometer, an instrument that measures the gaseous properties of the atmosphere. The ammonia and methane were found over the south pole of Mars, and Dr. George Pimentel, a Berkeley chemist, claims he also found that Mars doesn't have a dry ice polar cap, and he suggests the chance of biological life. What is considered the first successful landing on Mars took place when NASA's Viking 1, which launched in August 1975, and Viking 2, launching in September 1975, both returned images to Earth. They collected scientific data and undertook biology experiments searching for life. They found none. Viking 2 would return 16,000 images, along with information about the Martian atmosphere and the soil. And now, Viking. The lander and the orbiter both are packed with instruments to conduct a number of important investigations, 
investigations which cut across the lines of geology, meteorology, chemistry, biology, and others. Investigations which pose questions. Questions about the forces at work under the surface. Forces which have caused volcanoes studied from far away and close up. Some of the pictures have shown us staggering features. Coprates Canyon, immense, dwarfing anything we know on Earth. And fields of sand dunes spaced a mile apart, examples of large-scale depositing by the wind, and other sand dunes longer than any in the Sahara Desert. Huge craters, as big as anything on the Earth or the Moon. There would be more missions with successes and failures. When the landers succeeded, the images were spectacular. The photographs, though, were from a single location. When astronauts go to Mars, they'll move about, as NASA shows in this animated video. So until then, our best chance to explore different areas became the missions of Mars rovers. After all, they move around. Here are some highlights. Pathfinder and Sojourner landed on the Martian surface on July 4, 1997, the landing site shown here. Pathfinder was the lander that deposited Sojourner. And here, you see Sojourner after rolling off of Pathfinder. A United States mission, Sojourner was only expected to return data and images for one week, but instead lasted 86 days. Most likely, the battery failed. Pathfinder broadcast 16,500 images and 2.3 billion bits of information. Sojourner returned 550 pictures. The United Kingdom sent Beagle 2 to Mars in 2003 aboard the Mars Express. Beagle 2 penetrated the Martian atmosphere on Christmas Day. Airbags inflated to protect Beagle 2 on impact. Mission engineers spent two months trying to contact Beagle 2, but were never able to establish contact. Then, in 2015, NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter captured images of Beagle 2. It appeared that just two of the four solar panels actually deployed, leaving the communications antenna blocked and useless. NASA sent the rover Spirit to Mars in 2004, which sent back images and data for six years far beyond the expected three-month lifespan. Spirit traveled 4.8 miles in about five years, shown in this time-lapse video, and most likely would have racked up even more distance if not for the rover's wheels getting bogged down in Martian sand. Spirit did continue to send images from that location until March 22, 2010. The Opportunity rover was Spirit's twin, landing three weeks after Spirit and on the opposite side of Mars in January 2004. Opportunity's expected lifespan? 90 days. But Opportunity toiled well until 2018 when it went into hibernation. Its life then most likely ended by a fierce dust storm. Here you see Opportunity's progress compared to the size of Washington, D.C. NASA's Curiosity rover launched in November 2011 and landed on Mars in August 2012. Among the mission's goals were to find organic carbon compounds, investigate the building blocks of life, discover areas that might have been formed by biological processes, and study the atmosphere and radiation and seek evidence of water. Five, so what's next? Mars 2020. And that's been launched and on its way to Mars. And lift off. As the countdown to Mars continues, the perseverance of humanity launching the next generation of robotic explorers to the Red Planet. And Atlas TU has gone to closed loop control. On board is a helicopter called Ingenuity that will test the first powered flight on the Red Planet.
Well, what have we learned in the years the rovers have roamed Mars? NASA says that Mars was, quote, once very different from the cold, dry planet that it is today. Evidence discovered by landers and orbital missions point to wet conditions billions of years ago. These environments lasted long enough to potentially support the development of microbial life. The Mars 2020 Perseverance rover is designed to better understand the geology of Mars and seek signs of ancient life. The mission will collect and store a set of rock and soil samples that could be returned to Earth in the future.